Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Bust the Asian Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times, and I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, in case you didn't know yet, we are both Asian. Still both Asian. So for today's episode, we will be discussing Season 1, Episode 9, Home. Written by Eric Kripke and directed by Ken Girotti. I was so mad when I saw that this was direct. The, sorry, that this was written by Eric Kripke. Because so I was like, wow, that was a really good episode. I wonder who wrote it. Oh, the worst man alive. No, Hi. <laughs> I mean, like, it makes sense because it's plot heavy. Yeah. So, of course, it's going to be written by Mr. Eric Kripke himself. But oh my god, like, I watched this episode. And remember back in, like, episode 2? in this podcast when we said that we're not Mm -hmm. fans of the show. (laughs) Right. I may be changing my mind. Didn't I I message you, oh my god, I think I love Supernatural after watching this episode? Literally, I was like, okay, maybe this show is actually good. Right, like, maybe there's good writing and themes and things in Supernatural crazy this episode made me remember why i wanted to do this podcast and why i wanted to rewatch the show in the first place and why i stuck around the very first time i watched it like it's such a good episode anyway <laughs> so what what did you know prior to watching about this episode okay so i knew that this is the episode that we get to meet missouri my beloved she was even cooler than i thought she would be um i knew about the scene with mary's ghost where she tells sam that she's sorry and sort of burns up um and i knew that the case was a haunting at their old house but i think i thought that the antagonist of the week would be mary's ghost So I thought that the only ghost there the whole time was Mary's until Missouri said that there were two. Like, before I was cheering, going like, Oh my god, I can't believe Mary Winchester herself tried to freeze a toddler to death by luring him into the fridge with juice. (laughs) But then it wasn't even her. What a fucking- what- so sad. So sad. Let Mary do murders of children, 2K22. So that's all you knew? You didn't know about the ending? No, I did not know that the worst man alive was going to show up at the end. It was it was a jump scare. It was horrific. It made me scream and cry. Oh, that would be interesting to talk about because it is like quite shocking. I remember watching this like uh last year when I've forgotten it already and I was like, "Oh my god, John is here." Anyway, there's the road so far and it's one of the better edited ones of season one because it doesn't have all the weird flashy text on screen it doesn't have dean like saying previously on supernatural (laughs) yeah thank god right and in fact it's just like sort of a bunch of mary relevant clips from the last few episodes and it ends with dean like shoving sam against the bridge in episode one and saying don't talk about her like that so I thought, I thought the editing on that one was decent and a good lead up to what was going to happen. Okay, so we open in Lawrence, Kansas, Sam and Dean's hometown, to a woman crying over her wedding photos. Uh, we presume here that she either separated from her husband or her husband died. Her kid goes up to her and says, Mom, there's something in my closet. So the mom checks, her name's Jenny by the way, Jenny checks and says, there's nothing here, honey. Which is such a lie because Dean and Sam and Cass are all in the closet (laughs) right now, but... The mom talks in the kid who says she doesn't like the house, but the mom promises that they'll be happy here and they'll be fine. She kisses the kid goodnight and she turns to leave and the kid asks Jenny to barricade the closet door with a chair and she does. So the woman, Jenny, goes back to unpacking and she hears scuffling in the basement. So she goes down to the basement. And, uh, okay. Uh, so you live in the US, right? Mm-hmm. Our house is really this big. Like, because 
I was thinking about this in terms of like John was a blue collar worker, right? Yeah. He was a mechanic. And the house is so big. And as far as I know, Mary didn't have a job. Right. I was just thinking like how can they afford a house this big? Unless it was renovated to be bigger. I was also wondering that. Yeah, cause it is possible that the house used to be smaller and then it, after part of it burned down, they rebuilt it larger. The houses in the U.S. are indeed this big. I think another thing is that real estate in Kansas, I would assume, is a lot cheaper. Mm-hmm, that because makes sense. Yeah, it's Kansas, and the cost of living is a lot lower, and also I think because there's less population density, square footage doesn't cost as much unit-wise. But yeah, it, it still seems odd that John would be able to afford a house this big, and it also seems odd that Jenny would be able to f- like afford this house given that she says later that she's unemployed and can't afford a lawyer. I was gonna say this was before the housing crisis. I have no idea what the housing crisis was like, <laughs> but- Oh, true, this was before the housing crisis. I don't know what house prices were before the housing crisis, but maybe everyone just lived in mansions for no money at all. Who knows? Not me. Uh, we go back to the kid who isn't sleeping and the chair starts moving away from the closet. Uh, Jenny, who is still in the basement, finds some pictures of John and Mary and the Winchester kids. Back in the daughter's room, we find that the closet is burning. What did you think of the effect? It wasn't very good, CGI-wise. The thing is, like, the fig when the figure later on is burning, it looks good. But when yeah. the closet is burning, it looks goofy as shit. Yeah, it just looks like they put a fire in front of a green screen and then made the green screen the closet. Yeah, well, uh, what can you do? It's 2005 and their budget was $20,000. <laughs> anyway. I swear to God, that's a lie. That is a lie because they had to at least pay the crew more than $20,000 for a season's worth of work. Again, it was before the housing crisis. (laughs) (laughs) Housing crisis. You're right. You're right. The crew each got a penny a day and that was enough for rent and health insurance and everything. So uh, the daughter screams and we get the flash screen. And now this I'm sure of because I rechecked. This is the first intro screen where it happens after the teaser portion. Did you notice that? Oh, so all the other times it happened after the road so far? Yes, exactly. This is one of those things that I assume you just won't notice because, again, you don't- you've never watched, like, the show enough times to, to, like, connect the dots that, like, that's the- that's what they usually do. But, like, I noticed, and every time after the- on the road so far, I was I was always very confused and very like when will it change when will it change and now it changes and I'm like I was right all along. Now we're at another Sam nightmare and he's dreaming of Jenny screaming in her bedroom. He wakes up and they're in a motel and Sam's drawing a picture of a tree and he looks really cute in this scene like he really does he looks really cute in the scene anyway (laughs) (laughs) he does like i must admit he looks like i've told you this but he looks like an elf right he's the twink pinocchio (laughs) yeah this this episode is sam twink pinocchio moments for realsies Right, so Dean's looking for some cases, but Sam's very stuck on drawing the tree. And then, and then Dean, while trying to get Sam's attention, says, Any of these things blowing up your skirt, pal? Which I think means that I get to pull out my spreadsheet again. I I thought about this long and hard, because I... I... <laughs> Did you- oh, fine, okay, hit me with it. No, I just- does it count? (laughs) I think just literally joking about upskirts 
is already bad. I guess because the delivery was more serious, I was a I was able to like excuse it a bit more. Like he it wasn't like <laughs> like it wasn't swarmy, you know. But yeah, I get what you mean. So you can add a point. Thank you. Yeah, Dean misogyny moment number 15. Oh my god. <laughs> Sam realizes that the tree from his dream is near their old childhood home because he saw it in the background of their the photo that we've seen before of them as a family. And I was like, it's a fucking tree, Sam. Trees all look the same, and the one you drew doesn't even look like the tree in the photo, <laughs> but whatever. It's the same tree. Somehow. Sam says, Dean, I know where we have to go next. Back home. Which made me so sad that, like, like the last thing that they had to call home was the house that burned down when Sam was six months old. This entire sequence, like, everything that comes after this up until the scene ends, I was so... <laughs> I can't yeah. describe, I can't explain the state that I'm in. <laughs> the state of your heart. Yes. Sam and Dean are your best friends. Literally, they're my best friends. And this scene, like, hurts me. And But also, it's so, like, melodramatic that it's so enjoyable still, you know? Right. I was like, look at those meow meows meow. <laughs> Dean is clearly affected, but goes, okay, random, where'd that come from? Um, which starts the whole thing of Dean during this episode where he's trying to be cool as a cucumber and just cracking everywhere all the time. Sam says that he thinks that the people who live in their old house might be in danger and tells Dean to just trust him on this. Dean says, come on man, that's weak, you gotta give me a little more than that. And my, my immediate thought is, well, you should have given Cass a little more than that when you asked him to be on your side and not do purgatory during the man who would be king. Because, again, <laughs> the only person I care about in the entire world is Cass. But Dean keeps pushing, and Sam eventually tells him that he has these nightmares that sometimes come true. And Dean's very stunned about this. And after Sam tells him about dreaming about Jess's death, Dean just tries to brush it off. Okay, so this is like the secret that Sam was keeping during Bloody, Bloody Mary. Mary. Yeah. Right, well, how do you- what do you think he was like feeling during this scene? Because I know that he was sort of backed into telling Dean here, but do you think he feels relieved that he's finally getting to let go of this secret? I don't think- uh, he was feeling anything with regards to the secret because I think more than anything he was feeling like and we can see it throughout the episode like the hype of the of the fact that they might find out who killed Mary and Jess because like throughout this episode that was really Sam's focus like every turn he makes he's like it could be the thing that killed mom and Jess so I feel like what he was feeling in this moment was more with relation to that than, like, oh, my secret is revealed. Yeah, that makes sense. Sam's very practical. He was like, well, the thing that I want is to find what killed Jess and to end the revenge plot that has been taking up all of our lives. And the way to do that is to say these words. That makes sense. So, yeah, as you mentioned, Sam is very excited about this case. He says this might even be the thing that killed Mom and Jessica. And Dean's still being very overwhelmed. And he says, slow down, first you tell me you've got The Shining, and then you tell me that I've got to go back home, especially when and melodramatic pause. <laughs> so I was like, when what? And Dean says, when I swore to myself that I would never go back there. It's so melodramatic. It zooms in on his then, face so much, yeah, his teary little eyes. Fully zoomed in on his face, and then he does like a little turn, like he turns around. So he turns his back to the camera. And then Sam was like, we have to check this out. And then he turns back around to face Sam and the camera, and he's like, I know we do. I and it's we so do. dramatic. <laughs> It's so dramatic. And like th at this point in the episode, I was like, I am having so much fun. I am, I, I 
enjoyed this episode so much and we're literally like 10 minutes in probably less than 10 minutes in yeah great i love when the men show emotions and cry <laughs> also i think it's interesting i guess to think about this conversation in the context of bugs just happened so they've already had a lot of arguments that shake up their brother relationships and show a lot of resentment that comes out of the way that they were raised because mary died so early mm -hmm. so yeah going from that to this is is spicy so they arrive in lawrence and then in the car sam says you're gonna be all right man and dean in all honesty replies let me get back to you on that i like that line that he didn't just say like yeah i'm good like he's he's being as honest as a person like dean can possibly be at this moment so they head out to the house and dean starts introducing themselves as from the fbi but sam stops him and says the truth which is that they are the winchesters and this is their old house the woman believes them and cites the photos she found as the reason why she believes them. So she lets them in. And they meet Richie and Sari, the two kids. So Sari is the daughter, the older daughter, and Richie is the younger son. So in this scene, Richie is like asking for juice, and we pointedly look at the fridge, which has a little lock on the side. Which is foreshadowing for later, but also it's such a weird detail, but I guess it's essential to the plot that there's a lock. But also it's not right. that essential, because like, if you close the fridge, like, you can yeah, open it from the inside. It's hard for a toddler to push it open, right? Yeah. I guess it's just to make it seem scarier that he's trapped inside. Anyway, they start talking, and Sam and Dean ask about the house. Jenny says, well, it's getting old. The wiring's faulty, there are rats in the basement, and then Sam and Dean's suspicion light bulbs are like lighting up at this point. And then Sari, the daughter, asks Jenny to ask Sam and Dean if quote unquote it was here when they were here. And Jenny tries to comfort her, saying that she had a nightmare, etc. etc. To which the kid replies, I wasn't dreaming. It came into my bedroom and it was on fire. Dun dun dun. Do you remember the first time that you watched this? Did you think that because I already knew that it was Mary's ghost, but did you think that they were going to find the thing that killed their mom? Like what was your thoughts about the whole mystery the first time you watched this? I watched this when I was thirteen and I was I like you know when you're thirteen and you're like you watch things and you're literally just like not using your brain <laughs> yeah that's like, fair that's like, fair you were I like it was on wasn't... fire cool i like yeah, fire cool. yeah i probably wasn't literally thinking anything i literally was just probably consuming it because i wasn't like using my brain and shit right so now sam and dean are outside the whole time when they were inside the house their faces were so clenched they were like trying so hard to smile and not cry. They both looked so angry and that tension is brought outside. Sam's basically yelling when he's like, you hear that? There was a figure on fire in there. Like these were all signs of a malevolent spirit. Dean says, well, I'm just freaked out that your weirdo visions are coming true, which I mean, he's deflecting. He's freaked out and he's going back to what is, I guess, normal for him, which is ribbing his brother. Sam is like, who the fuck cares about that? Like, do you think we're gonna find the thing that killed mom and Jessica? Like, has it been here the whole time? Has it come back? What's going on? We have to get these people out, etc. And they just go to the gas station to brainstorm. Yeah. The transition is Sam says, uh, well, what are we supposed to do? And then it transitions to the gas station where Dean says, you just gotta chill, man. <laughs> he doesn't say it like that, but <laughs> it, 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 was, <laughs> it was a funny transition. Uh, this, this entire episode was like so, I don't know, I liked it so much. It's well written, it's well directed, and it's like, you know, little moments like and that. And it's Sam-centric, it. the most important thing. I don't think it was sam centric i'm going to i'm going to rally the troops for dean on this one i 
I saw this as like fully Sam centric. Like when the Mary Ghost says Dean and then walks right past him. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, <laughs> I know who so this episode too. is about. Uh, well, I think like the moments with Dean calling John. Well, that just that moment actually, and Dean being yeah. like uncomfortable the whole time. I wouldn't say this episode is Sam centric. I'd say it's Sam heavy, but there's still Dean in it, and like Dean's emotions at some point are still uh, front and center. So I'd say like you get a lot of Dean stuff out of it too. So we cut to the gas station, right? And you know, Dean says you gotta just chill, man. They discuss what they would do if it was any other case. So investigate the house, talk to anyone who was around, except now they know what happened to the house. Sam asks Dean how much he actually remembers. And we get the... I, I think this is iconic, right? Like, it's, yeah. it's gifed a lot. It's like, the I remember the fire, the heat, when I carried you out the front door. And Sam asks, you did? And Dean goes, you never knew that? And Sam goes, no, I never did. Yeah. Which, okay. It's very touching. But also, as a sibling, as an older sibling, if I'd done that, I would, there would not be a day that went by <laughs> where I wouldn't bring that up to win an argument. Yeah, literally rub that. In. Like, I guess Dean is a bit right. more reserved. Like, oh, you don't want to eat my, what does Dean make, hamburger macaroni? Well, I literally carried you out of a fire. <laughs> When you were six months old, and you would be dead if it weren't for me, so eat your spaghettios. Anyway, uh, they talk about what John saw, right? Which we already know it's Mary in the ceiling with um, whatever killed her long gone. So Sam asks if John had any theories, and Dean says if he did, he never told us. They figure out that, like, to know what's happening now, they have to figure out what happened then to know if it's the same thing. There's a beat of silence, and then Sam asks, Does this feel like just another job to you? And then Dean deflects, and he says, Be right back, I need to go to the bathroom, and then he leaves. Yeah, but first he makes he makes anguished little acting faces. <laughs> and then he uh, goes out back and contacts John. He leaves a voicemail. Should I just say what the voicemail is? Yeah. Okay. So he says, Dad, I know I left you messages before. I don't even know if you'll get them. But I'm with Sam. And we're in Lawrence. And there's something in our old house. And I don't know if, the th if it's the thing that killed mom or not. But I don't know what to do. So whatever you're doing, if you could get here, please. I need your help, Dad. A single man tear starts playing in the background. <laughs> this 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 scene, he was he wasn't like outright crying, but he was holding back tears. Yeah. He was very choked up. And yeah, it got he's to just me. a kid who needs his dad. Yeah, no, it got to me a little as well. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he's just a kid. And he needs his dad, and his dad's not coming. So, now we're back at Jenny's place, and she's got a plumber over to look at the backed-up sink. So the plumber's working on the pipes, and there's this toy monkey with symbols that starts laughing and clashing the symbols together and looking extremely creepy. Plumber tries to turn on the garbage disposal, but it doesn't seem to be working. So he sticks his hand down way far, and I know immediately what horror thing is going to happen at the end of this scene. <laughs> yeah, it's very classic right. horror. Yeah, he thinks there's some clinking happening in there, but he can't get anything. He puts it back in, and then the garbage disposal starts back up. He's screaming, his hand is being chewed up, the monkey is laughing and clapping. We see the, like, bits of his blood and flesh flying into his face and coming out of the bottom of the sink, 
It's so fun. And no, and I thought it was Mary this whole time. Like at the beginning I thought everything <laughs> was Mary and I was so excited about how Mary was chewing up some guy's fucking arm and being such a girl boss and then it wasn't even her. Fucking hate this. Well, uh, next we go to a car auto um, <laughs> fixing up place. That's what I wrote in my notes. I cannot be expected they to know what- They call it a what... garage. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so they they go to the garage and they're talking to one of John's co-workers and they said and he said like John was your typical marine you know doesn't didn't want to lose fights etc etc about the marines thing do we ever when do we learn that he fought in Vietnam or are we just sort of supposed to know from time zone or sorry not time zone time period I actually don't know if that's like canonically something that they say explicitly that he fought in the Vietnam War. I know that War. There, there are like props that show his medals from the Vietnam War where they say it like the word Vietnam on them but I don't know if if it's ever actually stated out loud. Yeah me too. Yeah. I also don't know. I just have so many thoughts about John be being a Vietnam War vet, but I don't know when to bring it up because I don't know if they ever cl like clarify that that's what it is. So, okay, well, the title of this podcast is Busty Asian Beauties, which, you know, is the result of a very gross Asian fetish thing. Whenever I think about that, I think about how John fought in the Vietnam War and how so much of the Asian fetish in Western countries is a result of things like the Korean and Vietnam Wars where sort of these soldiers went to these countries, killed innocent people, and their only interactions with local women were either through rape or sex work. So like they came back to the US with this idea of Asian women as like these, you know, like exotic, sexy, subservient things. And those character traits are sort of what make up the, a the Asian fetish these days. Like that is sort of a big pillar of it. So when I think about Dean and Busty Asian Beauties, I think about like, I wonder what John said about Asian women when Dean was young. I wonder what magazines John had under his bed when Dean was young. And this isn't to excuse Dean in any way. It's more just about the ways that various racisms can pass down through generations. And like, I don't know, I just know that John was shitty to Vietnamese women overseas. I just know it. I know it in my heart. He mentions the ex-marine thing and then... He talks about how John sure did love Mary and doted on those kids, but after the fire, he kind of just lost it and started reading weird books and saw a palm reader in town. And Dean asks if he knows the name of the palm reader in town, to which the guy says, well, no, I don't. So we then go to Sam reading out palm readers from the, I assume, yellow pages. I've never seen one. I've never touched one, but I know what it is. And I'm assuming this yeah, is it. Yeah, it's a phone book or something. Yeah. And he lists out the palm readers that he saw. And he says the El Divino, the mysterious Mr. Fortensky, and then Sam. Oh my god. Sam does the sturgeon face. Yeah. I love Sam's sturgeon face. It's the best Sam face. It was very short and very quick. But I, I saw it and I was like, yes, he does it. And this may or may not be the first time. I think it's the first time because it's the first time I've noticed it. But I feel it like will I've come seen back. It quite a lot in earlier episodes, but maybe my definition of sturgeon face is just laxer than yours. Yeah, this one is like very sturgeon y. And he goes on and says, Missouri mostly. And then Dean recognizes the name as the name in the first sentence of the journal that. John carries around. He reads the passage and it says, I went to Missouri and I learned the truth. Which Dean always thought was a state, but now could be a person. Now we're in Missouri's house and she's talking to a client and she's telling him like, hey, it's okay. Like your wife isn't cheating on you. She loves you. And then as soon as the guy goes, she goes, 
Poor bastard. His woman is cold banging the gardener, which is such an entrance for a character. Like, iconic. Yeah. Absolute queen. God, so good. Dean is like, why didn't you tell him that? And Missouri says that people don't come here for the truth, they come here for good news. And then she starts talking to them. She knows their names already. And she recognizes them. She says, Oh, you boys grew up handsome. And then she tells Dean, And you were one goofy looking kid, too. <laughs> Sam starts looking absolutely delighted. And Dean looks upset. And Dean, like, every time Missouri does, uh, like, makes a comment about Dean, like, they really make a point to show Dean's face, and it's always funny. Like, you know what I said in uh, Phantom Traveler, where, like, right. the comedy bits feel like it's Jensen Ackles playing Dean instead of Dean being himself. Like, this right. is what I'm talking about when I say it feels like Dean being himself. Like, it just looks like what how Dean would react naturally, you know? Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel yeah. like it's being overacted. Anyway, it's so fun. It's so funny. Yeah. Ugh. Missouri, my beloved. Okay, and then she sees Sam, and she, like, takes his hand and says very gently, Oh, honey, I'm sorry about your girlfriend. And your father, he's missing? Which is, oh, yeah, Sam's face, her face, it's all, it's all a lot. And Missouri reveals that she knows that because that's what Sam was thinking at the time, and she is able to read minds in some way. Dean asks where John is, and Missouri says she can't tell them. Dean is like, you're supposed to be a psychic, but Missouri explains that her only powers are reading thoughts and sensing energies in a room, and they sit down, and Missouri tells Dean, if you put your foot on my coffee table, I'ma whack you with a spoon. Icon, queen, never been done before, best character in Supernatural, <laughs> etc. Dean says, I didn't do anything, and Missouri says, but you were thinking about it. Oh, God, she's so good. She's so good. Yeah. Miss Missouri, are you single? <laughs> anyway. Sam, Sam is so amused by this, which yeah, just adds Sam's to the amusement. delighted. Like, Missouri just reminded him about Jess, and he probably felt very sad, but... That all went away as soon as Missouri threatened to whack Dean with a spoon. So they ask about her history with John, and she says that basically she told him about the supernatural after the fire. She went to the house and tried to sense what had been there, and she didn't know what it was, but she could tell that it was evil. Sam says that he's sure that something's back in the house, but Missouri says, well, that doesn't make sense because... I've been keeping an eye on the house, and there's been nothing weird happening there. Why is it acting up now? And Sam says, I don't know, but this is all happening after Jess died, after our dad went missing. I feel like something is starting. And Dean says, well, that's a comforting thought. So uh, we go to the house where Jenny is calling someone who is telling her that she will be held liable for the plumber's hand. She's like, I don't, ha I don't have a lawyer. I can't afford a lawyer. Why should I be held liable? And then scratching starts happening again. So she hangs up and tells little Richie that she's going to be away for a while and then leaves. So Richie is inside a playpen, right? And he's playing inside when the sides of the playpen falls down and so he can walk freely now and then the fridge door opens and richie sees the juice so he's like oh juice and then he goes inside and goes to the fridge and then the fridge locks itself god i wish this was mary i wish it was mary like it would be so cool because she's she's been dead for 20 years like like, that's enough for a ghost to start becoming evil or whatever. Like, I know that Bobby's a ghost for, like, a week in season 7 and he's already losing it. Mary should have become the evilest, like, the evilest boss bitch ghost in the entire world. And she should have been, like, trying to kill this poor woman's family out of, like, some twisted sense of both. Jealousy over the fact that she gets to, like be the one parent left who gets to raise her two kids as a single mother like Mary would have wanted to if John had died instead 
and, like, as a way of rallying against, like, the fucking, like, housewife life that she was trying to build for herself, which she could never fit into. But no, she's just in a white dress and smiling serenely, and she's not even trying to murder children! <laughs> okay. Let Mary murder children, 2K05. Let Mary murder children! So Jenny comes back and finds Richie me- missing. So she looks for him, and she starts freaking out. And then when she has partly given up <laughs> very like, quickly <laughs> after 30 seconds of searching, she sees milk spilling out of the fridge at the bottom of the fridge. And so she opens the fridge door and sees Richie. So she picks him up and comforts him. And at the same time, the doorbell rings. So she opens the door and it's Sam Dean and Missouri, my best friend Missouri. So they try to get in by saying that Oh, uh, we'd like to show our friend around the house, too. But Jenny's like, this is not a good time. Please go away. My son was just in a refrigerator. Dean tries to push, but I guess is a little rude about it. And Missouri smacks him. <laughs> so true. And she tells Dean, can't you see that the poor girl's upset? Give her a break. She tells Jenny, like, forgive this boy. He means well. He's just not the sharpest tool in the shed. But hear me out. And then Missouri says, like, I think you know what I'm talking about, that there's something in this house that wants to hurt your family, and we're people who can help, who can stop this thing, but you're gonna have to trust us just a little. And I I liked this exchange so much, because I feel like so far we've sort of seen the only way of saving people, hunting things, being, like, being a hunter, and you don't have a home and you drive around and you look at cases and you sort of swoop in you're not you don't really feel very much personally about it you don't you do try to be compassionate towards the victims but sort of in a way that's also trying to get information and like this is happening after bugs when you know linda dies in the shower while they're making jokes um so just thinking about how missouri has these powers and she's able to save people from things but like she has a house she has roots here and she tells people the truth when she knows they really want it and she's been going around keeping an eye on this house like she has a home and she's looking out for her neighborhood her community yeah her community from her home that was so nice to me i was like you guys don't have to do this you guys can just settle down somewhere and then, like, chat with ghosts sometimes nearby. Did you know that, according to... I'm not sure about the accuracy. Again, I don't really care much about behind the scenes. But uh, according to what I've read sometime before... Yeah, Missouri was supposed to come back. Missouri was supposed to be the Bobby. She was supposed to be Bobby. I'm so upset. Okay, do you like Bobby? I don't really know bobby very well oh, yeah, yeah so you don't know yet if you my like my best him. friend likes bobby so like i'm assuming he has to be okay <laughs> well bobby have i told you about my theory about like you know what the girl is of someone is based on whether they like bobby or not <laughs> right yes dean dean fans like bobby because dean is bobby's favorite kid yeah and then Sam fans don't like Bobby because Sam is his least favorite Winchester, his least favorite kid. And Cass fans don't really care about Bobby that much because the relationship between Bobby and Cass is not really that developed. You are being so mean to the Cobby shippers right now. Bobby was <laughs> literally the first man that Cass ever touched, and you're telling me that wasn't important. <laughs> To the actual Kabi fans out there, I do I do support you, and I think your ship is fun. Kabi's literally DILF for DILF, and you're being so rude. Uh, I just- Bobby's fine. Like, personally, maybe this rewatch will change it, but I don't care much about Bobby. And like, I just feel like it would have been interesting if uh, not even Misery is the new Bobby or something, but like, they work in tandem. If Misery was just around a little bit more, and they also had Bobby. It would have been interesting because Missouri obviously connects better with Sam because of the whole psychic juju And like Bobby connects better with Dean. So like they could have their 
parent figure that they connect with more if Misery was around. And like, Misery in this episode was not really a parent figure. Like, I wouldn't put her in that role because I feel like for you to have that role, you need to be around a little bit more. If she was, you know, meant to be that person, if she was meant to be developed as that character, it would have been interesting. But alas. But alas. Yeah, no, didn't they? Didn't she not show up? Again, until season 13 when they brought her Yeah, when they ki- kill fucking her killed her off. Oh my That's god. That episode pissed bullshit. me off so much. It pissed me off so much. And like, the way they introduced her there was like, Oh, Missouri, like, long time no Z, but like, we have been in contact. And then he, she does the thing that she did with Sam. Like, I'm sorry for your loss, but with Dean, because Cass is dead. And it's like a Destiel moment. And then she dies! And like... Oh my oh, god. god. <laughs> uh, but whatever. Oh, that's that for such, again. It's such bullshit. It's such bullshit. It's yeah, such that's bullshit. That's for three years from now. <laughs> or two and a half. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I don't know what our, our schedule is anymore. Now they're exploring the house, and Missouri says that this room should be the center of the dark energy, and this is Sari's room. And Missouri says because this used to be your nursery. This is where all of it happened. And Sam looks up at the ceiling, but it's all white and it's been painted over. So yeah, no Mary blood stuck up there. Dean pulls out his EMF and Missouri calls him an amateur. And then she says, yeah, this isn't the thing that took your mom. The energy is different, but I can sense that there's more than one spirit in this place. And that's the moment in which all of my dreams and hopes were crushed forever. And ever and ever, and I wept and threw my computer across the room, etc. Because <laughs> Mary didn't get to try to murder children. So, yeah, Missouri explains that because something so evil came to their house, it left wounds in this place, and sometimes wounds get infected, which I thought was such a nice line. Like, yeah. yeah. I have nothing else to say about it. It's just so true. I remember it as Misery saying sometimes wounds fester. Which like so when she said the line, I was like, say say the word, say 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 the sentence, wounds fester or whatever. And then she said wounds get infected and I was like, Aw <laughs> She did the next say- L word. Yeah. So, uh, well <laughs> Oh god, did I just alienate like our last listener? <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out. Okay, but anyway, Fester is a Meg's TL word because it's how Cass and Meg describe Meg's wrist when Cass is wrapping it in Goodbye Stranger, which by the way is a Meg's TL episode. What else happened in that episode even? I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> we often joke that like we are like the opposites of each other and that uh we are representation for like opposing sides and it is not it is so true in like the meg steel department so if you are a meg steel anti well i don't support you if you're a meg steel anti because i thought they were like very cool and in love and a little bit yeah (laughs) they were they were hot and also in love but like I- I'm also ambivalent about Meg Steel, so like you have someone on your side at least. <laughs> right, Missouri explains that this place is a magnet for paranormal energy, and one of those spirits is a poltergeist who just wants to kill Jenny and her babies. What is the poltergeist lore in Supernatural? I feel like I don't know much about them. Like, are they also a spirit of a dead person? I'm not sure if they're a spirit of a dead person. But they're a spirit that is more malevolent than just a ghost. Maybe they're just ghosts of, like, really bitchy people. I look forward to becoming a poltergeist later. Oh, well, Missouri said she can't make out the second spirit. And Dean's like, okay, well, how do we stop this? So we go to Dean making some cloth hex bags. I don't know if they're still called hex bags if they're doing good. I I still think they are. I think they're still called hex bags. Yeah. And he asks what they are, and Missouri says the ingredients, and I guess this is our first introduction to witchcraft-esque work in Supernatural, which is pretty cool. To me, I was like, why is not- why is Sam not the one doing it? He's the one who's gonna become a witch. (laughs) Yeah, witch, Sam, and game. 
So Missouri says that they need to put the bags inside the north, south, east, and west corners of the walls of the house on every floor, which should kill the spirits and purify the place. At this point, so they're talking, right? And Dean, like, takes some of the root and tastes it. (laughs) Yeah, he licks it. He licks it and then he makes a face. And I was like, Dean, what are you doing? But it was a funny scene. Anyway, Missouri says that they need to act fast because the moment the spirit knows what's up, they'll attack. I liked the hex bags a lot. I thought it was another way to differentiate between like psychics and witchcraft and hunting. Like there are no guns involved. Like we're just gonna put some herbs in a bag and put them in the house. It was nice. And like when she said the different directions of the house, I was like, ooh, feng shui. Now they're back at the house, and Jenny says that she's not sure if she's comfortable leaving them here alone. But Missouri says, like, just go and take your kids to the movie or something. It'll be over by the time you get back. And I think at this point, I wrote down in my notes, have we considered Missouri x Jenny? I was gonna say, I'm sure there's fic out there. But like... But there's probably not. There's probably not. Maybe you could pioneer this genre. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Everyone, get our, our, like, thousands and thousands of fans. Get on it. (laughs) Send us a link. Everyone's going inside, and they're putting holes in the walls through hammers and putting the hex bags into the holes. In Sam's room, a plug on a lamp unplugs itself and starts going at him and eventually strangles and chokes him. Downstairs, Dean is in the kitchen. He is also putting in hex bags and a knife comes out of a drawer and throws itself at him, but he ducks. Um, Missouri is in the basement and there's this table thing that barrels towards her and pins her against a wall. Meanwhile, okay, so Sam's getting choked out by this, by this power cord, right? And then he's lying down on the ground. He's trying to get the hex bag in, but he eventually just sort of falls unconscious. And I, it's so sad because his, his hands are around his neck, right? Because he's trying to get the cord off. And I was waiting for my first Sam's getting crucified third time this week moment, but he wasn't getting crucified. (laughs) It's so sad. When does Sam get crucified? He gets crucified in season 12 for sure, and then like in season 5. Does he get crucified when he dies in Obel? In Obel? What the fuck? Oh, all (laughs) hell breaks loose. (laughs) Obel. That's fun. Uh... All hell breaks loose. I don't think so. I think he gets crucified when he is like strapped down to a table. Oh yeah, in season four in the in Bobby's panic room. Yeah. Okay. Was it I'm season looking four? Forward. Or yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, it's demon blood. <laughs> no, I was thinking season five for some reason. But yeah, you're oh, well, right. I it's think season he, four. He also has to detox from demon blood after my bloody Valentine, right? And also probably, I or does does he? I don't remember. Uh, anyway, yeah, I don't know anything about this show, guys. Haha. <laughs> I just follow a lot of Sam fans. We get this moment where Dean runs upstairs to where Sam is choking out, and he puts the hex bag inside after trying to save Sam, and there's this big blinding white light that looks like the world's worst CGI that rushes out of the house. And then Dean unstrangles Sam and hugs him. We got our first brother hug. Yeah, it's a nice moment. It lasts literally like two seconds, but it's still a brother hug. The screen goes black immediately because it's like, (laughs) men don't have feelings, bye. I'm an AMV maker, right? So I have like gone to the wiki to like look for like lists of hugs or whatever. Oh yeah, I fucking and this is... love the hugs super wiki page. Yeah, and then w- at one point like they count this hug as like maybe doesn't count because it's d- Sam doesn't Sam hug Sam back because he's strangled. passed yeah, out. Sam... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, every time I go to that page, I read that line and I'm like, I have a giggle because it's so funny. 
okay, so now they're looking at the mess, right? That they've made. And Sam is like, are you sure this is over? To which Rizuri says, yes. Why? Why are you asking? And Sam goes like, never mind. Uh, yeah. And then Jenny and the kids come in and look at the mess. To which Sam says, don't worry, we'll pay for all this. And Dean Face goes, what? With what money? <laughs> yeah. And Rizuri says, Dean is going to clean all this up. And Dean's face goes, so what? <laughs> and at this point, I was like... I was like, don't be so mean to Dean. Like, okay, being mean to him is fine and good. No, shh, shh, shh. Like, being mean to him is fine, right? Like, I enjoy it. I've seen it. I enjoy it. But, like, ordering him around, that's when I'm like, okay, that kind of crosses the line. Because, like, we know, you know, he already does that enough for his dad. The the, the whole taking orders and shit. So when Missouri was like, oh, Dean's gonna clean that up. Go on, boy. Clean it up. I was like, I, I got up in arms. And I was like, no, don't boss him around. <laughs> I I do recall that this was sort of a moment when, as you mentioned, sometimes funny things feel like they're in character and in show. And sometimes they feel like acting moments or writing moments. I did view this scene as sort of like a, oh, like they're digging their heels in too hard on the it's funny that Missouri is mean to Dean thing. Like, it did feel maybe a bit out of character from the character that we've gotten so far. But I also thought it was funny, so I forgave them immediately. I, I put a sad face on my notes because it made me, like, go, mm, no, don't be so mean to him. Don't bot him around. But anyway. I'm writing two smiley face into my notes <laughs> right now. <laughs> Right. Also, after that, Missouri says, like, and don't cuss at me, which makes me believe that Missouri just saved Dean from getting a 16th misogyny note because he was probably going to mutter, son of a bitch. He wasn't going to- I don't think he was going to call her a bitch. I think he was just going to say son of a bitch as, like, general being upset yeah. sounds. But I would have I would have argued very hard for a misogyny point, even if I didn't <laughs> believe myself. <laughs> no, that's what I was just about to ask. Like, yeah. is son of a bitch considered a misogyny tally? I, yeah, I don't really think so. I mean, I think the phrase itself, I dislike because it makes it so clear that bitch is gendered and that when you insult a man, you're really just insulting his mom. So I don't like the, the phrase, but Dean's not responsible for the phrase son of a bitch. So no, I probably yeah. wouldn't call it a misogyny moment, but I would argue very hard for it. I would have defended him. A little bit later, Missouri and Sam and Dean are leaving the house. After they leave the house, Dean is helping Missouri down the stairs the way you do with your grandma. <laughs> And I did, I did write down that that was very sweet. Even after, like, Missouri forced him to clean up the house, Dean's still, like, being a good little boy scout. Every single time I watch this episode, I'm like, oh, this is just how I hold my grandma. Like, every single time. <laughs> I always forget, and then I remember when I watch the episode. So that's fun. Yeah. It's really cute. Now Jenny's in bed alone reading. Oh, she goes to sleep and then the bed starts shaking violently and she starts screaming. And see, at this point, I for sure thought that they got the poltergeist out. So I was like, oh, yay, it's Mary! <laughs> but it's not! <laughs> it literally isn't! I was like, I was so excited. I was like, go on, Mary, fuck it up. So true. I was like, Mary's so cool. She's giving Jenny the magic fingers will tell bed experience. Have we considered Mary x Jenny? Etc, etc. <laughs> and it wasn't. It literally wasn't even her. And it's not like the poltergeist was doing anything bad. Like, she's the poltergeist is just shaking the bed. Right, that's not trapping a kid inside a fridge or chewing some guy's arm off. So now we're outside and Sam and Dean are in the Impala watching the house. Um, and Sam says that 
they're staying here because he still has a bad feeling, and he wants to make sure that everything's okay. And, I mean, obviously it's because he saw his vision and his vision never happened in front of him, so he's like, something is still up. And also, I guess he can sense the bad vibes. Sam looks up at Jenny's window, and it's the scene from his dream. She is screaming and, like, pounding at the window or whatever. And Dean says, you grab the kids, I'll get Jenny. And I was like, oh, Dean is Dean coding Sam and John coding himself in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> Dean's running to Jenny's bedroom and the door is locked, she can't get out. Okay, so Dean rushes up to Jenny's bedroom and... She can't open the door, so he tells her to stand back and kicks it down. They rush downstairs, and Jenny's worried about her kids. And Dean says, it's okay, Sam, Sam's got them, let's go. Okay, and now we're at Sam. He goes to Sari's bedroom, where, you know, there's the big burning in the closet. Ah. Uh, Oh, also, he's carrying Richie in his arms, and I, yeah, I think the supernatural men should just hold babies all the time. Like, he's holding two kids at the same time. He looks so yeah. strong. Ugh, yeah, I guess that's why we see those terrible dehydrated abs <laughs> later in the season. <laughs> he's been, he's been doing bicep curls with, with children as the weights. He tells Sari, don't look, don't look at the closet, which I thought was quite nice. Like, yeah, he's trying to, trying to comfort her, trying to make sure she's not too traumatized by this experience. And he runs down the stairs, but then there's the sound, like something's coming for him. And iconic, iconic moment yeah. where he puts them down and he tells Sari, all right, Sari, take your brother outside as fast as you can and don't look back. So good. I've forgotten that, like, this is part of the episode that they do this callback. But, like, when it happened, I got so excited because, like, Sam doesn't know. Like, Sam yeah. doesn't know that's, that's what John told Dean. So, like, it's... I mean, it's not by accident. It's a fucking TV show. But, like, <laughs> in the universe, it's, like, an accident. And I just find that so endearing. Uh, I, I, I was having the time of my life watching that scene. I also think, but I think part of me was sort of upset at Sam about it. Because earlier when he's in Sari's room, he sort of freezes when he sees the fire. And I feel like what was going through his mind was, that's what killed my mom, that's what killed my girlfriend. This is my time to have my revenge moment. And then he's like, wait, no, I'm saving the kids, let's get out. So then when he pulled that, I was like, oh no, is Sam gonna do a whole John moment where he like puts this on this little kid because he needs to go back and have his revenge about Jess. But then it turned out that he was just trying to get them out before some ghost grabbed him. So I was like, oh, thank God. I knew my best boy would never do this to me. We're good. <laughs> yeah, so some power, like, grabs Sam. Yeah, and he, like, slides on his face back through the house. So the door closes, and Dean's like, oh, shit, and gets a gun and tries to bust in. And inside, we see Sam getting tossed around, and Dean is hammering the door with an axe. So, an axing the door, I guess. <laughs> he, uh, and then, uh, Sam gets cornered. He, 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 like, gets forced to... forced against the wall. And then, a fiery figure starts walking towards him. But Sam doesn't look scared. Uh. Uh. <laughs> <This scene>. <laughs> <laughs> Dean gets in. And then points a gun at the figure and said, Sam says calmly, he says, don't shoot. I know who it is. I can see her now. And the, the so thing good. transforms and it's Mary. It's fucking Mary. So Mary is there and she goes and says Dean to Dean. Well, and the then first <laughs> Dean was... says, mom? And he's like fucking like crying and like teary-eyed and yeah, sitting there. Yeah, oh my god. And then she goes to Sam and says, Sam, 
I'm sorry. And on the I'm sorry, like, she's been smiling serenely this whole time, right? She's the chillest ghost known to man, killing no children ever. But then when she says I'm sorry, it's the first time an emotion crosses her face. Like, she looks genuinely guilty and concerned and grieved. She doesn't respond when Sam says for what. She just uh, turns around and faces the ceiling. And then she says to what we assume is the poltergeist she says you get out of my house and let go of my son her one son the only one she cares about i just love how she walks right past dean she says his name and then she just walks away she literally could have talked to sam from that position but she very pointedly left dean dean's having abandonment issues about this for like 20 years afterwards i swear to god <laughs> When she says, get out of my house, I well, I was, like, cheering. Yeah, I was like, like yes, get out house. of her house. Go It's Mary. her fucking house. And uh, so the poltergeist, like, burns up. And Mary, the figure, also burns up. And Sam gets let go by the force that's holding him up. And we pan to Dean, who's, who says, mom, like, softly. And I was like, no. <laughs> this is so sad and so entertaining and so fun and so amusing. But I also so love sad. how many disorders this is giving Dean. <laughs> and then it's over. The haunting is yeah. over. Do you, do you think Mary was apologizing for dying or for the demon blood? I th do you know about like the fact that she made a deal? Yeah. So I guess those things were sort of the same thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so now we're at the epilogue. So Jenny's given the trunk of photos to Dean, and Dean's looking through them and thanking her. And then we pan over to Sam sitting by Missouri, and Missouri says, like, yeah, there are no spirits in there anymore, for sure this time. And Sam says, not even my mom. <laughs> a little boy he's just a little boy <laughs> and missouri says no and then she explains that mary's spirit and the poltergeist energy canceled each other out in the most like hand wavy <laughs> explanation i've ever heard <laughs> like i don't yeah. care that much because this isn't a monster of the week episode this is a character building episode so like whatever sure mary's ghost and the poltergeist energy canceled each other out whatever go for it slay but it made no sense to me yeah and missouri says that your mom destroyed herself going after the thing and Sam says, why would she do something like that? And Missouri says, well, to protect her boys, of course. Which was sweet, but also at this point, I was like, we've had a lot of sweet moments this episode. Sam asking, why would she do something like that? I was like, well, like, duh, because she said, get out of my house and let go of my son. Like, she stated her intentions there. Like, it just felt too much like the writer's felt like the the watcher needed that kind of exposition and i didn't need that kind of exposition but you know it was sweet so i'll take it and then we get missouri echoing exactly what mary said when she says sam i'm sorry and sam says for what missouri says like so you could sense that this was here even when I couldn't, and Sam's like, what's happening to me? Oh god, you're gonna suffer so much in this show, Sam, I'm so sorry. And Missouri's like, I know I should have all the answers, but I don't know. And then they get ready to head out, and Missouri says, don't you boys be strangers, and Dean says, we won't. And I wrote down, because I know about Route 666, Season 1 is the season of Dean breaking promises at the end of episodes, but I guess they do show up again in season 13, and then she dies. So, I guess they weren't strangers, but maybe they should have stayed strangers, honestly. Yeah, so Missouri says see you around, and they head out. So, Missouri comes back to her office, and then she says, That boy, he has such wonderful abilities. Why he couldn't sense his own father, I have no idea. And then we pan to see the couch in her office. 
And it's John. <laughs> and he's been here the whole it's fucking, fucking time? John. Like, he has been here this whole time. Oh, I'm so mad at him. So mad at him. He heard Dean's voicemail and he was like, nah. I think it was actually like he heard Dean's voicemail and he was like, okay, I'm gonna go to Lawrence. Huh. Okay. Maybe and so. And then like just didn't show himself. And then he asks Misery if it was really Mary's spirit. And Misery says, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And John emotes for a bit. He's like, he like twiddles his ring. And then Misery says, John, Win- John Winchester, I could just slap you. Why don't you just talk to your children? He says, I want to. Um, you have no idea how much I want to see him. But I can't. Not yet. Not until I know. The truth. What a bitch. (laughs) What a dumbass. I hate this guy. Even just a simple, like, don't worry about me, you know? Right. Like, they're terrified. They think he's dead. Right. It's so bad. And, like, I know there's the argument that he was trying to protect them by leaving them out of his search for Azazel, but... He's not protecting them when he's sending them off on hunts where they get almost killed every episode and they would have died this episode if, like, Mary's ghost hadn't saved them. Like, Mary, who is dead, has been a better parent to them this whole show so far than John. Ugh. Also, I mean, I know that, at least from what I've read from the Sam fans on my dash, that John sort of suspected that Sam has, like, not human abilities for a while now, but do you think him overhearing Missouri saying that was the first time he it was confirmed to him that Sam had psychic powers? Maybe so. God. <laughs> I feel like, everything is just flooding back to me, like Dean, John whispering to Dean. That, yeah, like, kill this kill guy. Sam. Fucking murder your brother right now. Do it. This is this is our first time seeing John. Yeah. Like after the first part of the first episode. So it's mm-hmm. been a while. That's why they had all those family photos in this episode cuz they knew that casual viewers would not remember what he looked like. Yeah. <laughs> so they were like <laughs> true. By the way, Jeffrey Dean Morgan is John. So when you see him at the end of this episode, you'll be like, damn, that's him instead of who the fuck is this guy? So what did you think about this episode? I, for the first time, I thought Supernatural might be a good show. Yeah, me too. Like, it revived. Like, I think you know this, but this week, I've been really into Supernatural for some reason. (laughs) Like, even more so than usual. And I was, I was watching, like, episodes from outside our podcast yeah i um, saw you live vlogging dog teen afternoon (laughs) which is a good episode it was a fine episode okay it's not good but like it was all right well so that we represent everything i haven't watched dog dean afternoon but if you hate it i promise you that i also hate it so don't quit our podcast right now Dog Dean Afternoon is actually fine. It's the hill that I will die on. Did he not want to fuck a poodle? <laughs> it was a throwaway joke. <laughs> right. The, the entire episode, the rest of the episode was pretty fucking good. Ugh, fine. Alright. Sure. I mean, I, I saw a clip where he tries to shoot a pigeon with a gun. That was funny. Yeah, it is funny. Go, Dean. (laughs) I support your agenda. Anyway, what I'm saying is I'm really into Supernatural right now, and I was afraid that going back to our podcast scheduled episodes, like going back to this episode, I would be disappointed or I would feel like, oh, it's not that good. I'm bored, etc., etc. Because that's kind of been the mood for a lot of this past few episodes. Yeah, because we've watched Hookman and Bugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Last week was rough. <laughs> so bad. But- so I think my best line was Missouri's line about how when something that evil enters into a house, it leaves a wound, and sometimes wounds get infected. Because, like, what is supernatural if not about family trauma and those wounds getting infected? 
Like, and I like the image of a house being a wound that's infected. I, I I also agree with you. I think that's the best line. Usually, I try to differentiate our best lines, but like I literally wrote down, "This is the best line." <laughs> so I have I have to commit. <laughs> I have to be true to myself. Yeah, it's so good. Like the concept yeah. of a house being you know some like prior to that she says that like something really evil came into this house and it left wounds like the concept of like you know something really bad can happen and it's just gonna leave wounds that will get infested and then right. it's your job to make sure that they don't get infected it's like a really a really good metaphor for yeah. trauma and just bad experiences i also like that the solution to this house being a wound is to like fill the walls up with herbs like it sort of is like giving the house medicine which is fun yeah but um, it didn't work though see i i feel like it, it i think it did work but that the poltergeist came back because mary i the sort of the way that i was understanding it was like that bright flash of light like obviously that did something like, I think that the poltergeist was expelled, but I think that Mary stayed there and that the poltergeist was sort of feeding off of her energy and came back. And by choosing to let go and go to heaven, like, Mary was killing herself so that she could kill the poltergeist. Mm. Well, the, like you said, the explanation was kind of hand wavy. So. Yeah, but like, I feel like that's how I interpreted it. It makes me so sad if it didn't work. Like, I think Missouri's things should work because Missouri is cool. Anyway, what's your worst line? I, d I don't recall. Oh, 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 never mind. When Dean says, is any of this, like, blowing up your skirt? I would say that my worst line is, like, I, I want to, but I can't. Not yet. Not until I know the truth. Because, like, oh, I just yeah, thought it was so guy. annoying. Fuck that guy. And like Fuck last guy. episode, was it last episode when I was like, John's relationship with his children are complicated. Oh and yeah, you were like, John I might have sounded a bit like a John apologist on this on this podcast and now he's here and we're like, no, fuck this guy. Yeah, I, I saw his face and then I remembered why I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah. So that's that's over. <laughs> John oh. apolog semi John apologism is over. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, oh my God, IMDb. I forgot to look it up. Oh, but what is your yeah. IMDb? I mean, I thought this episode was so good, but so I feel like I don't know. Again, I think the pilot's been the highest so far. So whenever an episode's really good, I just guess the pilot score, 8.7. So 8.7 is your guess? Yeah. I would say this is better than the pilot. I agree, but I also thought Bloody Mary was better than the pilot, and the IMDBers didn't agree with me. I would say this is an 8.8. <laughs> okay, let's look it up. 8 points, uh, no. Oh no, I got spoiled. I got spoiled. <laughs> oh, for the next one? I got spoiled by something else. Yeah. Oh. Okay. It's... Scrub it out of your oh mind. Oh my god. Oh my god. What? what? Crystal, it's an 8.9. It's an 8.9. Oh! Yes. Oh, so Slay. good. It deserves it. It deserves it. Home, my fucking yeah. beloved. 8.9 is pretty good and it yeah. fully deserves it. And I should have exactly. shot up higher. If I was like in charge of like if i would have just gone with like what i think the score should be i would have gone with a nine because i think yeah, it's genuinely too. that good yeah but i i figured that the people wouldn't always agree with me but i guess they did yay yay okay so do you have any more remarks anything more to say hmm. i don't know if this is like important enough to go into the podcast but I, I kind of disliked that Sam was more powerful than Missouri. Like, Missouri's been being a psychic all her life, and then Sam swoops in and has weird vibes and can tell that the other spirit is still there, even when Missouri can't. I like the differentiation of their powers. Because Missouri can feel, you know, can read thoughts and energies in a room. And Sam can see the future. Like, those are different things. 
And I like that they're like saying that like Sam is not a psychic. That's not his power. So I thought that was cool. I mean, okay, like I very much want Missouri to come back and I wish she had come back, but I feel like I, I wouldn't necessarily want her as a mentor figure for Sam because it feels too much like... Like, in, like, yeah, is, you know how, like, Doctor Strange is, like, some white guy goes to Tibet, and then he learns magic from a Tibetan guy, and then he's better than him, and he's a superhero or whatever? Like, it would feel like that to me if Missouri was Sam's mentor, and he was suddenly just, like, way better and more powerful than her. So, like, I want her back, but I don't know in what kind of capacity I'd want her back. I actually didn't think about it as, like, because earlier I was saying that, like, I want Missouri to have had existed in the show for, you know, a longer duration than she mm-hmm. did. But I didn't actually connect the dots that that would mean she'd be mentoring Sam. Because, again, like, I see their powers as completely different. Right. Like, it's just a different thing. Right. So they're just connecting in terms of the not being human. No, she's human. Like well, not yeah, being. Yeah, she's human. But I know a lot of hunters don't. Hunters don't. Some hunters don't view psychics as human, right? Yeah, maybe so. But uh, yeah, that's it for this episode of Bus Asian Beauties. Next time we will be talking about season one, episode ten, Asylum. Leave us a rating or a review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beautiespodcast and on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, which is one word and spelled B-A-B-P-O-D. You can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustyasianbeautiespod at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye! Bye!